hi guys today i want to talk about something that is going on in my country right now if you're nigerian you already know what's up but for my subscribers and viewers that are not nigerian nigeria is going through the fight of our life right now we are protesting against police brutality from the hands of this group of men called sas it's a unit under the police force the special anti-robbery squad these guys were formed to combat cases related to armed robbery kidnapping car theft etc now over time instead of protecting the citizens from these things they are now the ones that are putting the citizens through these things there's been a lot of extortion rape kidnapping killing from a force that is supposed to protect the citizens and the nigerian youths have had it up to here so we've been on the street for the past one week now protesting not just that the government should end SARS, but also that they should do a reform for the whole police force. I've had three major encounters with these SARS guys and none of them went well. I am yet to hear of a SARS story that ended well. The first time I ever heard about SARS was in 2012 when a guy I was dating then went missing for like five days. You know when you just spoke to your boyfriend now and then you call him two hours later? And the phone rings out and nobody picks. Okay, he's busy. Maybe he'll call me back when he's done. Hours later, nobody called. Maybe he's having a busy day. He'll call me back in the night. At night, nobody called. I called again. He rang out. Nobody picked. The following day, I went to his place. No one was there. I went to his office. The office was completely shut. I tried reaching his colleagues. The same thing. Their phone rang and nobody picked up. And that was when I knew that something was just wrong. But I was panicking because I didn't know what it was. Is it that he had an accident? Like what exactly happened? But if he had an accident, he cannot have an accident to tell his colleagues in the office. Now why is the office shut? I was so confused. Third day, it got worse because his parents would now call his friends and then his friends would now call me. And me, I would just like now be calling myself. Because I didn't know where this person was. One of his friends even said, okay, maybe he was arrested by the police. He came around. We went to different police stations trying to find which one he was in. Nowhere to be found. Fourth day, fifth day, and I got a call from an unknown number. I picked up and he was the one at the end of the line. He just said, babe, where are you? I said, I'm in my house. Where have you been? And he said, I need you to come to my place now. And on your way, please pass through the pharmacy, get cutting wool, painkillers, spirits, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> I quickly wore my clothes too. Passed through the pharmacies, got the things that he said I should get. On getting there, he was just alighting from the cab that brought him. Two strangers helped him out of the car and took him inside the house. So I just thanked the strangers and then they left. He took off his shirts and I could not stand the, the sight of his back. Like, this guy's skin was peeled out of their, or out of his body. Like, apparently, these guys used wire to whip them and was still putting them under punishment. And their skin was like separating from, I don't, like, I had to call my sister that is the doctor because I was just screaming. Sister, you know that guy used to see me with that? I told you, he's just my friend. Please, please, you need to come and help me. It was my sister that came dressed his back, allowed him to rest, and then he was going to the pharmacies to, to get treatment every morning and every night. What happened? The SARS guys, they got an information that one of their colleagues sells stolen phone as a side hustle from the boot of his car. And then you people came into the office and packed everybody. And the funny part is that the guy that sells stolen phone already had an information from an insider that they're coming to pick him up that day and he didn't show up at work so they packed everybody he even told me that i needed to see his supervisor's body his body is worse like where is that done for doing nothing okay they now upgraded it now became if you have dread you must be a fraudster. How dare you have tattoo or piercing on your body or use a fancy phone or have a laptop or even drive a nice car. It must be a thief for doing that. You know, they start oppressing the youths, extorting from them. They will ask you to open your phones in the process, check your, your credit alerts, take you to the ATM to withdraw money. I remember when I was in school, like 214, 215, if we were coming back for holidays, these guys had a checkpoint on the road. Whenever the vehicle is getting close to that checkpoint, the, um, the driver will stop and all the students will have to get down from the car, enter a bike there and go and follow one dead bush and come out after that checkpoint. 
then the vehicle you enter to pick you up from there and go like where is that done because you have a phone and you're carrying your laptop i'm going for holiday for god's sake i'm a student there's no way i will leave my my laptop in school there's no way i'm going to leave my phone in school it now got to the extent where students will build their gadgets when they're going for holiday like you will send it via dhl when you now get to lagos you now go and pick it up no now that's a high level of oppression imagine if somebody wants to kidnap your daughter is it not to position one bike person in that place where you enter bike then you will just google follow the bush and you will get lost in the process because you're running away from false men that are supposed to protect you 219 third experience the one that seemed like it was going to end well and now ended inside the well i was coming home with a friend at night around like past 10 he was going to drop me off in front of my place and then um, on one lonely street we met this group of men in black plenty and they all just like bounced out as if they are even am jobbers just bounced out and clamped on the car like stop shine their torch so we stopped wound down the glass and he said and they said we need to get down there they need to search us and search the car okay they're doing their job we got down from the car a lady searched me one of the lady amongst them going very well like they had the sense to let the lady search me she searched me a guy searched my friend and then two guys got into the car and searched the whole car asked us questions where are you coming from where are you going to what do you do let me see your id card all of that so when my friend gave them his id card they now saw his surname and because his dad was um, a known man in the force they all just like greeted him oh how is your father and all of that gave him back his id card and asked us to leave and then we left wonderful right they did their job got to my place i opened the armrest compartment to take my charger and some money that i folded together and put there with together with my charger it had three pieces of one thousand naira notes and some change i just folded it together and put it there with my charger it was money i came out with and then i saw charger i did not see money i removed everything from the armrest we still didn't see the money at some point it was even like ah. but i saw you when you put that money there I'm like me too and i mean i didn't even take it out everything has been in there since Apparently, those guys took the money that I put there. He was so pissed, he wanted to go back there to go and harass. I was like, just, just let it go. It's 3,000 something. Tell me if that is not theft. You literally stole from me in the process of searching me. That is absolute theft. This particular force is absurd and they need to be eradicated. They're like poverty that needs to be eradicated. They need to be eradicated completely. And the whole police force needs to be reformed. I want to urge every single one of you, if you're in Nigeria, take out this any time that you have to come out and protest. Come out and protest because this fight is a fight for us all. I'm somebody that my work is, I, I work around the clock, but even if it's an hour or two that I have, I go out to that protest to add to the numbers. Like, we need to create as much awareness as possible until the government implements all the things that we want them to implement. And for my non Nigerians, support us with your social media posts support us however you feel that you can support us because justice to one is justice to all enough of the killing enough of the extortion enough of the rape you don't have to wait when it happens to you it could have been you it could have been me that my friend is like one of the best tech guys that they have now he's even working for a government agency imagine if his life was cut short at that point imagine if i was kidnapped or killed while passing any of those bush because i'm trying to avoid the force that's supposed to protect me if we allow this to keep happening what will now be happening at the time of our children i'm sure they will not be able to step outside we need to curb this now